we don't want any new loan. Um, it's a very nice relationship with SAE, but back to our enterprise, that means our bylaws are different, our funding sources are different, our relationships are different, so we're in the process of dealing with all of those inner workings with the mothership. Uh, the way it works, oh, I was sharing earlier with the NASA stuff. I just came back from NASA. This is a little interlude for you guys. I had an update for you. I was at the Goddard Space Flight Center two weeks ago working with the NASA education team, and they gave me some update information for you. They've asked me to share it. Um, you might know we have the rovers on Mars, right? The two rovers. Does anybody know their names? Not close. You're close. Spirit and Catch the Opportunity, right? They're on Mars. They're way about live their lives, but they've been bringing back these beautiful high definition images from the Martian surface. But you might remember right after we landed the first one, we lost communications with it. They finally figured out what the problem was. Okay? So they've asked me and a few of us that were at this meeting at Goddard Space Flight, go ahead and share it. So here's here the problem was, just in case you didn't know, and they figured it out. Um, and once they figured out it was Martin the Martian, <laughs> screwing up the cameras. Um, and then they have a couple of images that they released to us to share. They didn't put that on the web or anything, but as they were scanning, you never know what you're going to see, but progress does continue. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, that's um, People are waiting for a Sputnik. How many of you have heard about that? We need another Sputnik moment in this country, right? We need another. You get tired of hearing about a Sputnik? Another one? Well, we need something like that. We need a challenge. A Sputnik challenge. That brought the country together yeah. for That's it. nine years. That was an amazing moment in American history. And so people keep saying we're looking for a Sputnik. And I don't know if a Sputnik liking that. I don't even know if that's, I don't know if I agree with that. But we, can, we can play with it for a little bit. Um, I, I'm looking at a different one. Um, anybody know how to boil a frog? I think yes. global warming is actually nice what Global warming? Yeah. But see, Sputnik was sort of like their ghost. You know, that was a challenge. It was that fast. Well, we were afraid that uh, the Russians were going to uh -huh. uh, kill us, just like we're afraid global warming. But that was a competitive thing, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a competition, basically, that said, oh my gosh, we better wake up to this? Yeah. Is oh, global yeah. warming a competition? Oh, yeah. Well, the Soviets were uh, evil. And, uh, right. <laughs> uh, the lack but of opinion. Let, let's get to the, do, do you have you know, well for rock? I have well for rock. Oh, I'll let go. No, go, go. Oof. You put it in cold water and then start turning up the heat slowly. And the frog will not get out. Why don't you just put hot water? Because it would be very excited and get, uh, try to get out. You don't boil a frog because it's an endangered species. <laughs> yeah. And here's oh, a guy. He's one of them, isn't he? Well, <laughs> very much so. And I agree with you, but. <laughs> From a metaphor's perspective, if you were to consider boiling a frog, that we're not on the invasion species list. <laughs> Doug is exactly right. Most people think when you put up hot water, you throw the frog in the water, and you boil it. Now the frog will get out. What I think is going on from a metaphor side is that we are in a slow process of falling behind. Uh, you know, we've, got a, we've got a couple of big deal items. You've probably seen some of this. Our source is aviation, we need space technology. In 2004, the 70,000 engineers we graduated in our country. Uh, you did same time period, graduated 350,000 in China, pushed to 600,000. These numbers are much higher now, from what I understand. There is some debate, to be fair, on how you define an engineer in these countries, right? Whether they are equal, equal matches or not, there's a debate. The point being, though, that these countries are churning out the skilled, engineering-minded people, depending on how skilled they are compared to ours, I don't know. Impact, as you can imagine, is our economy, if nothing else, uh, our national security, a number of other kinds of issues. So that's from aviation, we can use space technology. Um, another interesting couple bits of data just to show this boiling frog kind of maneuver here in China. Uh, Tyco Electronics in, uh, from the US took 2,000 jobs to China. MicroStar uh, from Taiwan went to China. Uh, NEC out of Japan took 1,200 jobs to China. Circuit Assembly took 1,000 jobs to China and from India. Nanotech from India and Korea took 10,000 jobs to India. Electronic Singapore, uh, Eastern Europe, built out of the Netherlands, uh, took their people that went to the Czech Republic, took that many jobs to the Czech Republic. Yazaki in Japan took that many jobs to Ukraine. 
Gable uh, Electric took that many jobs to Hungary. In Mexico, Motorola sent 700 jobs. Siemens sent that many to Germany. And Vietnam, believe it or not, Japan sent 5,000 jobs. So back to that, we're no longer in a US-based economy. This is a global intermixing, interwoven, intergalactic uh, so, um, situation we're dealing with. You've probably been made aware of that book. Mr. Friedman's World is Flat, controversial on many levels, but it's waking us up to saying we can no longer think there's us and everybody else. Right? This guy's all over the media. You may not agree with everything he says. He at least challenges your thinking, which is something that, that is pretty important. Fast Track Innovation Survey at 9,900 um, respondents. Sorry about the color on this. I it really lights up. U.S. has lost its innovative standing to China, India, and European Union. The online survey said 49% said yes, we've lost our innovative standing. The U.S. has lost its innovative standing. China will win the market share in information technology, agree or disagree, automotive, and biotechnology. China's on the game. Who is being surveyed here? These are people who are in the, in the fast track innovation survey, whoever there is, it's an online service or some sort. I um, grabbed it off of Americans? Some. Yes. <clears throat> yes, thank you. India is going to gain share at the expense of U.S. companies in integration technology, the internet, biotech. That's their best perceived anyway. And the good news is companies that respondents feel are free from foreign threat and are recognized for their innovation here in the U.S. Apple, Google, 3M, General Electric, Ideal. Interesting day. This is boiling from here. So very briefly, our foundation works at the following, and then we're going to take a break. We use learning and research, which we're going to talk a bit about today, as our core. Because if we don't, if we aren't informed as educators, then whatever we try and do is going to be a struggle. We take non-traditional project-based learning approaches. We're looking for that kind of stuff. Our little slogan is, we don't buy textbooks, we buy gear. And if we can get Keith, keep picking on him, we'll attest to that. I have a bottom one piece of literature, and we've bought a lot of materials. We're giving them the budgets to buy the gear so kids can do stuff. We hook that with teachers who are succeeding against all odds. In other words, if it's a high-performing teacher in a high-performing school, uh, we probably aren't going to spend a lot of time talking with them, not because we don't like them, but because we only have so much money, we have a certain target uh, that we want to go after. And we try and tie in innovative corporate partners who want to work collaboratively with us. And this actually has branched out into several different things. Uh, since we put this slide together not so long ago, uh, our, our connections to universities are much tighter than they used to be. So we have all these different kinds of institutions that we deal with. We deal with different societies, Michigan Science Teachers, uh, Metro Detroit Science Teachers Association, et cetera. Brain research tied in, corporations tied in, that's the industry piece, schools, math science centers, intermediate school districts, et cetera. All this stuff keeps weaving together. We don't have any one site specific type thing. That's kind of what we, what we do. Okay? So let's take a few minutes here. Um, how about you come back at uh, 245? Go ahead and take a bio break, uh, get some refreshed drinks, turn the lights back on, please, and uh, we'll pick up where we left off, okay? Oh, yeah.